I guess, um, hello again, Mr. James Portnow. <laughs> hey. um, I, I, first question I guess I want to ask you is, um, it's been a year since the last time we spoke. Um, what do you think, uh, in, in terms of this past year, in terms of games, what do you think good has happened, what do you think bad has happened, what do you think needs to happen? Well, I mean, even if you look around here uh, at PAX, the independent presence is incredible, right? Uh, we have seen so many, we've seen such a growth of uh, innovation because we've seen a growth in distribution and ability to fund, right? Um, I mean, it's, it's more than a year, but uh, with, with Greenlight, right, um, with a lot of the different crowdfunding sources, Rocks, uh, Rocket Hub, Kickstarter, all these sort of things, we've seen projects that would never see the light of day in uh, if we only had the AAA industry um, really making a difference here, uh, impacting the lives of a lot of people. So that's probably the biggest thing, this growth in distribution, this further growth in ways to fund games that otherwise couldn't possibly get funded. Um, in terms of extra credits, uh, what was your, I guess, what was over the past year, what was the favorite topic that you covered or any new topics that came up that you really want to tackle now? Or? Oh, there are always a million topics we want to tackle. Um, as far as uh, my favorite topics, I will confess, I like anything that gets me to, allows me to research random things. Uh, so, for example, the um, going over XCOM and talking about uh, the Fermi paradox and that sort of thing, where I just get to learn something radically new uh, is always a blast for me. Um, but in terms of more serious topics, uh, in probably a month or two, I'm actually going to do some crowdfunding of my own for a advocacy fund for games because I have this, I realize I've been trying to get out there, especially now that all the gun control, oh no, it's really game stuff has come up, right? Uh, I realize talking to all, a lot of different entities, trying to get people out to Washington, that we're totally reactionary, right? All we do is every time someone says, games are murder simulators, right? We go and try and convince people that we're not. We really need to be more proactive. We need to teach people, uh, we need to get the discourse to become, uh, games can educate. Games uh, can be used for science. They can, they're powerful cultural medium, right? To, uh, to allow each other to walk a mile in each other's shoes, right? There's all these um, incredible other aspects of games that don't enter the public discourse. Don't, don't enter you, what you see on CNN or Fox News. And we've really got to change that. And so we're going to do an episode sort of talking about that and talking about all the other ways that games can be used without losing the engagement. Um, and how to bring that conversation to people who only see games in terms of the ads they see on TV. So that's a big one for me. Just curious, like how do you plan on following through? Like what are some of the means that you'll be uh, using in terms of, in, for this advocacy group? Like what, what would that involve? So uh, that's actually a fantastic question. Um, I have already reached out to everyone from the mayor of Bellevue, right, to a uh, senator from Colorado, to a lot of people in sort of the existing political establishment. But there's a lot more than that. The first things I want to do is establish a, uh, a informational trip to DC with a group of uh, other, a lot of people who's uh, working in this field, employing lots of people, but think along the same lines. Uh, but the more important one, that's short term, the more important one is that all the time we talk about public funding for games. Um, and I think it would be great. But the amazing thing is it's already happening. The problem is that funding always gets to the wrong people. You see edutainment, you see these horrible simulation games that uh, maybe they know a lot about the field, but they don't know anything about making games. They don't know anything about engaging people. And so really, uh, just starting opening that dialogue and allowing the people who are um, sort of uh, in charge of distributing the grants, connecting them with people who can help direct those distributions to groups that understand that really, uh, or at least having other people who can vet what's going to be engaging, what's going to be effective. Because right now there's no open channel of communication. So establishing that's one of the first things I plan to do. Um, you have the panel later tonight. Um, what are some of the things you want people to take away from that panel, people who might be their first time seeing you? Um, well, we've had a bunch of panels so far, and all of them have been fascinating to me about, uh, mostly about, uh, one about games 
and uh, sort of having larger accessibility. How do we how do we serve people who may be disabled, who may have uh, things like ADHD or PTSD or any of these things? That one was fascinating. We just had one on how what can we take from games, right? How how do things games transfer into our real world lives? Also amazing. In terms of the extra credits panel, um, all I'd like to people to take away is that games matter, right? That we can do more and that this generation, uh, no one should feel marginalized for playing a game. No one, no one should feel like it's an embarrassing activity. This is something that you should be proud of and proud when you do.